Hello, I'm in need of a big coffee. However, we have a new device. An Asus Flipbook 14 TP412UA. Um, this time nothing in the high-end direction, more, I think it is uh, a Pentium. However, it's a con convertible, pretty nice, 360 rotation and so on. So, however, um, when we plug power and uh, press a button, I have to power on the PSU. Yes, and press the power button. You can see here yeah. it goes on. 0.3 amps. I think 1 amps goes to the battery. And we have no picture. Nothing. Also, when I come with a flashlight. To see whether just backlight is missing. Still nothing. No caps lock. Nothing. Can be anything. Let's open the, the device. So, no special history. Oh, it is on. Fan is spinning. So it is still up and running. However, regarding uh, the customer, nothing special happened. No, it is no display. Nothing special happened. It died. It died out of nowhere. So yeah. We have to find out what is going on. And the first thing we do is to remove the battery. So now it's off. And the ne next thing we will do is to have a basic overview of the device. Um, I know some other technicians um, declean to do a small check to all the main power rails here on the board but uh, personally in my opinion it is a great basic step for uh, diagnostics to see whether we have uh, a healthy board at least basically by uh, um, by working from the uh, values known working values from experience so we probably have memory here no it's not kilo ohms kilo ohms is most often 3.3 or 5 volts here we have even mega ohms this could be I have no idea what it is. However, mega ohms. This is a rail for memory. 184 ohms and the memory is probably underneath, underneath this shield here. So what else? Battery coil. Is this a battery coil? Can be. This can be the coil related to charging. High kilo ohms is absolutely fine. So basically, why, why do I do this? Basically, it's the following. For, well, from the location of the coils, I can already assume what power rail we have here. This, this can you do from experience. So we have here the memory rail with 180 ohms, which is a good value. Um, 
basically everything from let's say 50 ohms uh, onwards is absolutely fine. Everything below would be suspicious. For the 3.3 and 5 volts it is uh, the thing that uh, everything below kilo ohms would be suspicious. So um, a 3.3 with 100, 150 ohms to ground would be really really suspicious. Maybe a bad PCH already. No? Same is for charging. When we have Fifteen ohms here, okay. Seventy ohms. Thirty-three and sixty ohms. So sixty ohms is. Is it an I five or not? Is it an I five? I thought it is a Pentium. Really. I was already discussing with, uh, with the customer. <laughs> no. I thought it is a Pentium. I want to know it now. A Pentium. I think a Pentium comes with a system on the chip design. So a, BZ, uh, a BGA with one die and the customer uh, persists to tell me, to told me, um, persists to tell me that it is an i5, 8th generation. This would mean we have a second die on top of the BZ, BG, BGA for the uh, PCH. So how can we, we have to remove the, the fan. So what is it? It is at least a VGA with two dice. So, so now I'm really blamed. Can we read anything? Can't read the SR348. Let's check the web. SR348 Intel Pentium 4550U. So is it clear now? Good. Pentium. So however, what do we have here? We have all voltages present. Um, we have uh, good values around the CPU. Let's check again. So let's start here. So we have 15, 15 ohms to ground here. Some, someone would already assume a short to ground here, but it is not. It is a very, a very high value for a CPU because it is only a Pentium. If it would have been a, a Core i7, we probably would have 4 ohms here or 5 ohms. Same for VCC Core. Here we have 18 ohms, can be, can be below 5 ohms without any issue. But you, you have to decide, is it a good, good value or is it not? You have to know it from, from your experience. That's, that's the only way you, you can use what, what you do here, what you get here. Because when you can't interpret the values, there's no point to check. 45 ohms, 35 ohms. This is VCC system agent. This is a PCH. PCH is 
a bit tricky with the resistance. Um, we have uh, personally, I have seen a healthy resistance down to around 20 ohms, but everything below 20 ohms would be would be suspicious. Okay. Good. Let's check whether we can open. Yeah. Okay. So, basic troubleshooting means we have to put another RAM here. 8 GB DDR4. Maybe even without memory because we have soldered soldered memory here too. But then we have to put back the heatsink. So can be even something with the memory, with the soldered memory. When you're looking for something wrong with the memory, you're looking for a signal like DRAM reset, whether it is high. If not, probably something wrong with the, with the memory. So basically we want to find out whether DRAM reset is high and whether platform reset is high. Because um, if they are not high, um, the requirements for a good power on self test are not met. So there is no point to flash BIOS or something else because we have a board issue without platform reset being deasserted. Okay? So memory is removed. Power. So now without battery, so we have another consumption. So Way more change here. I have the feeling we have we have it already back to life. It is working. We have okay on off two times, maybe the third time. No. No. Interesting. No, nothing to see here. No. Okay. That's bad. It is on. With consumption of 0.3 milliamps. Control, Alt and Delete. Nothing happens. So. So we have another issue, unfortunately. So let's check what voltages do we have. 
maybe something obvious from voltages. Can you see everything? Yes. So, voltage. So what do we have here? 3.3, what is that? 5 volts, 1.2 for memory, like I told. This is battery charging. The voltage here isn't, uh, is meaningless here. As long as, a, as no battery is plugged here, the voltage uh, which is shown here is absolutely meaningless. Okay. So then we have the PCH ray, 1.01, okay, a bit low, 0.7 for the system agent, 0.8 for the CPU, and nothing at VCC GFX, which is absolutely normal. We, we never expect voltage uh, on VCC GFX except some spikes maybe when Windows is loading. Okay, so in my opinion it is fine. Everything looks fine here. Board number. Let's check whether we can source something. So nothing turned out uh, from my um, short research. However, um, I've uh, noticed that um, I'm not the only one with all voltages present, but uh, no post. And um, it was already solved by uh, other technicians by flashing the BIOS. The BIOS chip is here. So uh, we go straight to the BIOS chip, remove it and reprogram it put it back and then we'll see what happens. So my automatic white balance trick me. So we have a XMC BIOS chip QH64AHIG. So let's remove it. I think I have enough space here to remove it while it is still. Installed. Okay, this was fast. Wonderful. But something is still not okay with my with my light here. Maybe like that. Okay. Let's 
clean it a bit. Let's clean it a bit. One second. So my eyes are was gone. Just want to remove some of the flux here. Because um, can make issues. With the connection. So where is pin one? the software so it's plugged in in the PC detect when it is already auto detecting in the new programmer software so now we read it out two times because we want to make sure we uh, have the dump as is and not corrupted So disconnect. Connect again. Detect. And reading it out the second time.
wundervoll. Now we'll use FlexHex. Personally, I use FlexHex for this. So I open the file, the first file. Downloads one. And then I compare. With the second file. Okay. Now comparing. And the streams are identical, which is good. So one can be deleted. So when we have a known working dump, already cleaned ME. So should work without issues. Eight megabyte. Yes. And now programming. You can order the programmer with a simple soldering board for around 15 euros at uh, Amazon for example or eBay or somewhere else. It's a simple CH341A programmer and uh, well even after the first successful repair it, had, it has paid out. Okay? I have even uh, a programmer for AMD controllers much more expensive but um, I uh, have used it a few times successfully and uh, even this one has already paid out although I'm just doing this for hobby here and where a laptop to repair sometimes So I think we are done. Let's solder it back fast. Okay. So I think it's cold enough.
power so now let us see what happens Does reboots now the third boot? And we have picture. Okay. A simple case of corrupted BIOS. Yeah. So, as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.